Hey, John here. Let's talk about something called a net tie. Here's a new project. Let's say you've got a schematic that's got two separate grounds, like a ground, an analog and a digital ground. So maybe you have this symbol for digital ground, and then you would use GNDA for your analog ground, or whatever symbols you want to use. It doesn't even need to be grounds. This is just two separate nets that have two separate names is the point. Now let's say uh, you want to connect these grounds together in your schematic somewhere. And, and it's very common when you have a digital and an analog circuit that you have two separate grounds. And those two grounds need to be connected at some point. And that point where they're connecting is somewhat important usually in order to keep uh, digital noise out of your analog circuit. So let's see, we go for something called a tie. And you'll notice they have two pin and three pin and four pin, a T-shaped, a cross shape, whatever. All of these are going to accomplish the same sort of thing with different numbers of nets. So let's put a generic two net tie in here and just wire these together. The symbol is essentially a wire with two terminals on it, two pins, all right? So what we've got now is two separate grounds. As far as the schematic is concerned, these are not really connected. There's a symbol here. It could have been a gate. It could be a resistor. KiCad doesn't care so much about the fact that visually these are connected together mentally. Your intent, it doesn't really understand. All right. So this is a part like any other part. So I just enumerated it. Let's save a net list. Oops, it doesn't have a footprint. Edit that. These need to have footprints, and there are uh, footprints for net ties. If you go to the N, A, B, C, D, E, uh, right there, net tie. And there's a whole bunch of them. There's a two and a three and so on. These are things with pins, all right? There's a pin here and a pin there. And the footprint is connect them together with copper, all right? Uh, let's use, uh, this one's got holes in it. Uh, it doesn't really matter for this particular example. The point is that you got a footprint that says, hey, I want to connect copper from here to there. That's what's going on here. Give me a net list. Save it. Give me a PC board now. Let's make a new one. Let's uh, grab some edge cuts here and draw. Yeah, what's my grid? That's a nice coarse grid. Let's draw a PC board that has a shape like uh, whatever. A rectangle doesn't matter. Here to here to here to there. Is that close enough? Yeah, okay, save. Now go back to the front copper. All right, I guess it would help to bring in the net list at some point. It has one part on it. Okay, put it in your board somewhere. And you saw the footprint before, so there it is. It's a thing with two holes on it. Save it. Let's look at the 3D view real quick. So you got a blank board with a piece of copper with some holes right there. Okay. You know, that's interesting. It's actually got copper both on the front and the back. That I was not aware of. I guess it's because it's a through hole. Yeah, it makes sense. It's a through hole uh, tie. I normally don't use through hole ties. Way to call an audible in the middle of a video. <laughs> All right. Oops. I wanted to make that. Uh, and bigify that. There we go. All right. All right. So let's say you want to, you got a bunch of circuitry and whatnot, and you've got a, uh, a big ground plane on one side and the other, and they come together. If you zoom in, notice this is A and D. All right. So as far as KiCad is concerned, these are two separate nets. So let's go ahead. I mean, wire it, do whatever you're going to do. Let's say I have a circuit over here. Oops, that was turning it on, not placing it, constantly grabbing the wrong side. Uh, let's put an analog ground plane on here. Clearance, why is that set to zero? I must have had that set to zero for some other goofy reason. Let's make it that for whatever reason. Okay, so let's say this is the ground plane from the analog part of my circuit. Let's close this off. I don't know why they don't have a right. Oh, there it is. Close zone outline. Okay, there we go. Save. Now, if you hit B to fill this, it won't fill it. I think I talked about that in another video on uh, on uh, polygon pores. You actually have to have some copper in here 
Uh, I, it won't work. To, I don't think it'll work for me to just put this over like that. Let's see. No, it needs to actually have like a trace or something in there. So let's do, well, let's say you wanted it that close. All right. How do you get the thing to pour? Well, you go like this, you grab a trace and just put a little bit of a trace in there. That's all it really needs. Now it has something to go on. All right. And it has thermal reliefs turned on and everything. So that's what you're going to get in terms of the connection into this part. So this is a, a, a ground uh, for your analog. You'd then draw another ground, uh, another polygon, maybe over here. Let's draw it like that. Choose the other signal and just do the same thing. Close the zone, there we go. And we need to put a little bit of copper in there to make it happy. All right, pour that one. Okay, so, oops, save. There we go. And you can see they're both connected up like that. All right, so this is very common when you have a mixed signal uh, schematic. Now what's going to happen is that the, uh, let's say you now have other parts in here. Let's put a resistor on here for some something going on here. Uh, resistor. Okay. And let's connect this guy from ground D to, I don't know, what do I want? VCC. All right, so let's say my digital power domain is going to be called VCC. Let's go ahead and make a copy of that resistor. Well, before I copy it, let's put a footprint on there. I'm always forgetting to do footprints. And let's find a resistor. There we go. A nice, uh, what, let's do a through hole, nice big one, so we can see what we're doing. There you go. Put one of these guys on there. Now copy this, put it over here. Let's put another resistor on this side. Now, okay, so if you did not use this tie, what would happen is these two grounds, as far as KiCad are concerned, is the same net. In you open up your netlist file and they will both have the same name I don't know which one it'll call it one of the one of these two names will be used for all the grounds in your um, uh, your schematic come on <laughs> forgot how to end a wire that's great okay Oop, I want to get another power over here so maybe this was hooked to some other power uh, B 1.1 whatever which is a pretty screwy power for your analog domain. Okay, but nonetheless, we've got her now, right? Let's go ahead and annotate it. That's fine. Okay, save netlist and save that guy. So the purpose of this little adding these other parts on here is so that when you look at what happens with your rat's nest and everything else, close. So now we have two resistors. Look what's happening with these air wires. It specifically says, I want this guy here, the analog pin of this run resistor, to connect to this ground plane over here, which is the analog ground plane. This other resistor specifically tells you when you place this on your board, it better be connected to the other this ground plane, okay? So let's go ahead and move them all to where they belong. I mean, presumably this is what you would do, and then you would have, you know, power distributed or something. Report your polygons and zoom in. You can see this one is definitely connected to ground A. And this, you know, we haven't drawn anything in the schematic. This is definitely connected to ground D. Now, to prove that this is doing the right thing, let's go ahead and grab the silk screen layer. We can see what we can do in here. Move. Let's say you did something foolish and put it on the wrong side of your board. Look what's happening here. It will not connect it to the analog ground. But why? Because it's not connected to the analog ground net, even though it's physically connected with the copper down here, okay? This works a little bit differently than it does in Altium, or at least the last time I used Altium, which was like 13 years ago. Uh, Altium knows, for example, that copper was through here, and it reacts differently. That was like the winter 2008 release, or whatever the last one was that I used. So it would do something a little bit differently than this one does. It's interesting to see that there's a uh, an air wire still drawn here. I don't know why it would do that. This one does not have one. Uh, Repour this. Why is it doing that? Well, it went away. 
Eh, a few minor bugs still left in KiCad. I am still running 5.0. Uh, where is the about? Here we go. What's my release in this thing? The 5.02. Uh, I should upgrade to 5.1. I will do that one of these days. I'm very busy right now, and I don't want to risk breaking my schematics. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Maybe I'll do a video on that. And uh, I'll tell you what I think about that. Actually, I think if you go over to Contextual Electronics, uh, Chris did one on that exact subject. And he ended up in a situation he couldn't find some of the controls moved around and things like that. So I'll upgrade and probably go through the same thing. Anyway, this is what a net tie is for. This is why it works, how you're supposed to use it. Uh, you can either use, I mean, I use it with ground planes. You can use it for other things too just to keep things separated when you're routing your board. So let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Bye.